up, y'all? This is Brooklyn Boys Radio. We back, baby. What's good? What's good? We back for episode two. We made it to week two. That's good shit. Ain't that something? We made it to week two. Oh, man. I'm ready to kill this nigga, son. Oh, uh, here he go. <laughs> now, nah, nah, I'm ready to kill Monty. He just be messing up in the background all the time. Monty the man. Don't listen to that. Monty yeah. setting us up, making us look good, making us sound good. No, 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 Monty, that's, that's, that's the big homie, man. What's good, though? How was your week? My week was good, son. I had a slow week. I got over my sickness. I was a little sick all week from last week, so I'm better. I won't be coughing as much. Okay, okay that's good. You ain't catch corona or nothing like that, bro. Nah, right, not, so at all, good, not at all. But yo, I want to shout out the homie, man. Um, cool. Shout out the homie Slim. He made oh, some yeah. things happen for us last yeah, week. Yeah, shout out to Slim, man. And shout out to Cypress, man. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. Cypress Houses. Shout out to the little homies out there, too. Yeah, definitely. I hope y'all like that. Uh, that the whole slap episode, boxing so. segment for Brooklyn Boys. We're going to have at least once a month, though. Every, anybody got beef? Anybody that got beef? Just just call us up. You know, I want to settle it. No gunplay. None of that. Slap box it out. Two minutes. Yeah. And y'all ain't, y'all ain't even got to have beef, man. Like, if, if you just want to, you know, <laughs> exercise your skills, you can hit us at the, um, the Instagram page, at Brooklyn Boys Radio. That's Definitely. B-R-O-O-K-L-Y-N, boys with a Z. Radio, just shoot us a DM there, and we make it happen for you. We make it happen, man. Yeah, I, I, you gotta go back to the essence. Man. Oh yeah, they, exactly. <laughs> you know, because what we trying to do, man, we trying yeah. to show the youth when you fight, nobody loses because everybody gets to live to fight another day, and that's a definitely. win for both. So oh, definitely, definitely. Put the guns down. Yo, I gotta. You know, this is a, this is all new to me. This camera thing. So. I'm gonna say I don't be know which camera to look at. Like I'm confused. I'm still trying to learn. I yeah. think I think that's that's my cam right there. Yeah, I know that's my cam over there. And that's the why. Because when I be talking, I don't know to look this way, look this way, look at you. I don't know. Man. Yeah, just don't just don't look at my cam. All right, don't, so you don't look at mine. Do I don't look at yours. Right, I don't even look to the right. I, I either look right, straight how about this, don't look or at I me. look to the left. How about don't look at me? Yeah, this guy go. <laughs> now, nah, but check it out. No. The week was cool, man. I, you know, once again, you know how we start off the show. We talk about like current events and things that's going on. I was on the internet this week. You know me, I'm on Instagram all the time. Um, and I was just looking at, that's my, that's my source of news. Like, mm -hmm. I get news fast on there. I, you know what I mean? I, it's funny, I don't even watch regular news. Not the most credible news, <laughs> but you, you know. know what I mean? So I was watching, um, serious type of time real quick. I was watching um, The Officer um, in New York City. I think it was in Harlem. Uh, they said the homie, I don't know how true it is, allegedly uh, was wanted for attempted murder. He got caught with a burner or something like that from the stuff I was reading. And um, so a young lady, she must have walked up to the scene. And, mm -hmm. and when she walked over to the scene, um, they had the homie in the handcuffs. It was a bunch of people out there, a bunch of officers, a bunch of other people in the whole melee of things. And... Um, she went over there, it looked like she said something to the dude. I'm assuming it's her boyfriend, I'm not sure. As of what I saw, she approached the officer, he pushed her. Yeah, that's she what She pushed him say, back. Yeah. And she pushed him back. And then he, and then he, and then he punched her in the face. And he gave her some, I don't know if it was a punch, a slap, but... It, nah, it was, it was a punch. It was violent, it was violent. It was, it was... Very violent, she fell to the floor. It was definitely a punch. <clears throat> so, you know, I wanted to talk to you about that because I wanted to really know how you felt, your spin on it. like. Do you feel like he was in his right to do that to her because she went into the situation, I guess, an active investigation? Or he should have had more discretion on how he dealt with her? Now, now, or, you know, like, so what, because I know how I feel. I mean, I just wanna, look, I just, I'm trying to figure out. This is, yeah. this has always been my problem with situations mm -hmm. like that, right? I never understood why is it that these cops who are supposed to be professionals are held to a lower standard than civilians, right? So a, a civilian in that situation would get arrested because he's expected to have the discipline not to put his hands on, because Duke kept saying she was a teenager, so I don't know how old she oh, is. She was, maybe yeah, she's yeah. 17, maybe she's 18, who knows? Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, if it was me and you in that position, we'd be getting locked up. You uh, So I would <clears throat> say, this is what I want to say. Before I go to how I feel, I will say, Officers got a dangerous job, right? You never know. I got family on the job, so you never know who's going to react in a certain way, mm -hmm. right? Because we go, yo, shorty was, you know, that shouldn't have happened. But some officers get in a situation, especially domestic, and 
somebody feeling for their loved one, mm -hmm. somebody could turn around to stab a person, somebody could turn around, shoot a person, somebody could turn around, slap somebody in the face, and it could turn. Do you wait as an officer for that to happen, or you react to everything like that? Because I got an opinion on it, but I just want to know how you feel. I, because you I, don't know what's going to happen when you walk through any kind of situation. I totally agree, but in the same breath. I think the wrongest thing that I've ever heard is when cops say, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six, right? Mm -hmm. Which basically means what you're saying is you don't want to take any chances because you're not willing to risk your life, mm -hmm. right? You decided to be a cop. You went to the uh, <laughs> police academy. You went through whatever background checks that had to be taken. You went through this rigorous process in mm -hmm. order to become a police officer, fully aware of the risks that come with the job, mm -hmm. right? I wake up in the morning, and all I do is go outside hoping to come back home, mm. right? But you're saying you're not willing to take a chance, which means you're willing to take my life just because you were afraid or you thought I was doing something even though I didn't. When the truth is, I just came outside hoping to go home by the end of the day when it was your choice to take but this job knowing what, the, knowing what the risks are. Devil advocate, can the officer feel like I just took this job because, and I still want to go home at the end of the day to my family too? Yes, he can, but the reason mm -hmm. cops are called heroes is because they're supposed to be the ones that make the sacrifices for the community and for the civilians. And the truth is, I'm not saying that a cop should let any person take their life, but a cop should not be willing to take an innocent's life before gambling their All own. Right, so let me ask you this question. Is there a difference because she a woman? If it was a guy he did that to, would it be more like, all right, cool, he did it to the, to the dude, or it would be... It's the same because it didn't matter if it was a female or a male. I think first and foremost, that's a young girl, mm -hmm. right? That officer is also provoking a situation and creating a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. I have three daughters. My daughters are 24, 18, and 3. So I don't want you to go there. No, I, I, I have to I go there. Wait, wait, wait. How that's, can... not that, that's not what I'm saying. Relax, my brother. I don't want you to go there because I think that's another topic we could get into and bleed into that because I got a daughter too, so... We could bleed into that. I want to, because I want to address. I want to address the police situation. But it, too. But, but you can't. You can't discuss one without discussing no, no, the I, other. I, I never said that. We, and, we're going to discuss wait, that. And, and the before the, we get to that, I want to ease our way into that. The reason I'm saying this is, I think cops need respect training. They, they, they really do. And All they, right, so and, let, and, and, let me just sure. interject, because I'm, I'm just waiting to say, because I want to see if you was going to say it. So. I don't know if cops need respect training, right? I don't know if they need that. And the reason why I'm saying that, there was an incident, I don't know if you remember, a couple months back during the pandemic with the Jewish community, right? Mm -hmm. Over in, I think it's either Crown House or Williamsburg, right? And I don't know if you remember, it was a bunch of cops, about the same amount of cops you saw in that scene, mm -hmm. right? And it was a bunch of Jewish people that was out there. Mm -hmm. And they was pushing the cops. I pushing, remember. Pushing, right? You remember? I remember. They was pushing the cops. Now, none of them Jewish people was hit no. None of them Jewish people was beat up, and they was literally pushing the cops, going back and forth, yelling in their face, and nothing happened to any one of those people, right? And I think, no, one Jewish guy was, a, was uh, detained in that situation, but it was massive It people. was a mob. It was, it was a, mob. a mob pushing the, the police, It was right? a mob. So my thing is, when I got to talk about the police side of it, is it, you said respect training. Do you just think that they respect certain groups of people and think, look at other groups of people like animals because that guy was black too. The cop was black. Yes, he was. So my thing is like, yo, you look at your own people as animals. It's, you have a, yeah, but, you look at this downwards because if you was in the Jewish neighborhood, that would have never happened. So, the, but the truth is, think of the organization that he is a part of. All he's doing is following the lead of his higher ups in the entire organization. He's becoming. What what happens is once people become part of those organizations. It's just like when someone becomes part of a gang. They kind of detach from the rest of the world, bro. And they, they, they embrace and embody whatever the yeah. mindset and the ideologies are of that organization. That, 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 that That's what they said, become. Yeah. That's what they become. And I no, agree with that. And nothing else matters. But, don't, but just to answer my question, you, don't, you look at us as less, as when I say us, black people, mm -hmm. black and Hispanic people, as, le, as less than. Right? Because mm -hmm. you got to. Because you could go into a white neighborhood, you can go into a Jewish community, 
a whole mob of people being around you and nobody throw a blow. Nobody gets, nobody really get arrested like that. It's, it's crazy. But you come to our neighborhood, it's pushing, shoving, punching, slapping. It's not, you see, he got you on the ground. You, I see, I see my man. And I, you know, this is giving my own history. I, we, I talk about the story another day. Chest, uh, uh, police officers, when I was in high school, cracked my chest plate for, for just singing in the train station. Like, you know what I mean, to a girl. And they literally cuffed me, took me up steps, and dropped me purposely on the steps, let my chest hit the steps, drug, and then drug me back up the steps, put me upside down, and threw me on the car, and then took me to a precinct where they didn't know why I was there, called my mother, and then let me go from the precinct. You know I, what I'm saying? With no charges. But wait, I got one better for you. When I was, when I was about... They told my I was mother about, too, sorry. Told my mother... The cop told my mother, if you ever tell anybody this, I'm gonna tell, I don't even know why he's here. I just want his name so I can let him out. Let him out. But I got one better <laughs> for you. When I was 20, my man Oliver was killed by police. He was, of course, he, he, he was doing something that he shouldn't have been doing. Mm -hmm. You know, he came out, whatever. He tossed the weapon he had. They shot him. The bad part is, the next day, you know, we all went to his mom's crib to pay our respects. We in front of the building, everybody mourning. And the cops literally drove by in a squad car, cackling and laughing, screaming out murderers on some, sar like on some sarcastic BS. And it's just like, damn, bro. Mm. You know, these are the people that are supposed to protect us. You understand? And, and, and then people wonder why the relations between the community and the police department is so bad. It's because of the fact that there's no trust. There's no trust from us to them because of exactly that. They embrace and embody this organization that they're in, which does have a racist what culture. I, what, what, I, what I will say is you can't fight for the law and have lawlessness on your own side of the fence, too. And we, have, we live in a system where a lot of time it seems like they fight law with, they fight the law with being unlawful. And the things that they unlawful about, they then put that into law to make it law so it could be right for them to go fight the kid. It's just, it's the, like a backward the, system. But, the, the, but, the, but the, fun, the funny thing is, I honestly believe a lot of cops want to be gangsters, bro. They do. And they try to carry themselves like that. And it's like, yo, pick a side. Pick a side. If you're a cop, be a cop. Carry yourself as an officer. Be, be a law-abiding, not just citizen, but servant of the people you can't you can't tread between both, both lines, lines yeah. now, I, I totally agree with you with that but that being said because i want to make sure that we talked about the cop part of it and i want to make sure that you know and i'm sorry for shorty that that went through that whole ordeal and i want to make sure that we talked about the difference and how they treat difference in what community they are they in and how they treat people if you're black hispanic they beat you up if you're white Jewish or somebody else, they let you rock out. But what I really want to say, though, is also to the kids out there, too. And not just kids, adults, too. Because we got to hold ourselves accountable, too. Of course. Because Shorty, I don't, like I said, I don't think she, her behavior warrant that in that situation. But we got to be mindful as people are smart enough. The cops got an investigation. They, we got a target on our back from the streets and police. You can't walk into an active investigation and just go talking and meddling around. And a lot of times we go do that thinking that we like regular people, but they don't look at us like regular people. And I'm, and I'm sorry to say that. So we got to be smarter too at the same time. You can't be beefing and put cuffs on your back because as soon as you put the cuffs on and you start moving too crazy, what they going to say? You're resisting arrest. Yo, put the cuffs on. Go fight them another day. Go get your lawyer. Fight them another day if you want to live to see another day. Because it's been proven that they don't allow us sometime to see another day or we get hospitalized and beat up because we moving or twitching too much kind of stay as still as possible man because you don't want to you don't want to be in a situation where you fighting for your life with these guys and that's all i'm saying we got to be mindful as people to be. no i mean I, I can agree i can agree to that because it's like it has to be about prevention until we find a cure Definitely. because until we find a cure for the problem the only way for us to kind of stop us from continuing to lose our lives is to prevent it. So, I, I mean, I, I agree where it's like, look, man, if, 
you're gonna get you're gonna get arrested anyway. <laughs> Whether you resist or you don't. <laughs> the only difference is if you resist, not only are you gonna get arrested, you also gonna get your ass whooped. Is, yeah, resisting is my nuke, right? Because they mm. use anything for re- resistance. Of course. I've been in cuffs before. It don't feel good. But you Sometimes know, sometimes you try to adjust, and then that adjustment, you got you got a billy club upside your but, head. But, you know but there's but there's but there's also <laughs> many cases where they're whooping your ass and expecting you, you to, to still, still lay still. And, and it's like, how is that possible? You ever got a beating from your mama? <laughs> and she beat you with that belt? And you like, no, no, no. Like, you move, you're doing every kind of thing not to get hit. So I don't know when we expect people to stay still when they get their ass whooped. But, you know, I don't know, maybe you live in a different type of world. But I know you want to bleed into, and I didn't mean to cut your whole wisdom and all that. I know we want to bleed into, like, you know, just talking about our daughters. Yeah. And, you know, and not our daughters in this case, you know, I, you know, I think what you was trying to go to was like just being hit by somebody. It's not even just being hit. Mm-hmm. And this is why I say police need respect training, because what police do is they provoke a situation. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been in situations where I'm driving and I have my child in the passenger side and a cop pulls me over and he's talking to me. Yeah in a manner that's totally disrespectful now, bruh. Oh my God. I understand your authority, but I'm a grown ass man just like Like you. you. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sitting here in front of my child, and if you think that I'm gonna let you speak to me crazy, like you out your mind. You, now, yep. now, and what you're doing is you're provoking a situation. Definitely. So, of, you know, you can't, you can't violate no man in front of his kid. Like, yeah, like nobody but, gonna but, sit there and take that. But this is what I'm saying. So, in the situation with that young girl, God forbid, and I swear to God, one of the things that's in my prayers every morning mm. is, Lord, protect my children. Because I know that if my kids ever get in that situation, bro, I couldn't live with myself. Live with I would yeah, leave definitely. my house knowing I'm never coming back. back. home, definitely, 100%. And, 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 I'm, and I'm not even saying this on no, no, you know, being tough. No, it's not that. It's just as a man, I could not face myself in the mirror every morning. I could not lay there in my bed before I go to sleep at night. Knowing I let a man do that to my child and get away with it. Definitely get away with it, never. Like, it's either I would have to handle it or or I'd I'd literally probably go crazy Crazy and end up in the G building. Just being a man. No, 100% right. Yo, let me tell you something. One night, me and and Sid, my my baby, we was outside and um, I had picked up from work. It was late. She used to come home from work late, so I make sure I go to the train and pick her up and whatnot at, at the time. So, you know, we got, got something to eat, and I was dropping it to her mom's house, and we was like, you know, just wanted to do some daddy and daughter talking. So we laughing and talking and laughing and talking. We must have sat there for about an hour laughing, listening to music, just talking about life in school, whatever she was going through. A couple minutes after, some DTs pulled up on us, right? Mm-hmm. Saw them pass one time, but we sitting in front of her home. Saw them pass, come back, and they pull up on us. Not going to win us. He's like, daddy. Don't say nothing because she getting scared, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, y'all be easy. We cool. I got to mind you, her stepfather's police, mm-hmm. too. He live right up in the house, yeah, right here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we sitting in front of him. <laughs> so they knock on the window. Yo, what y'all doing? What, we, what you mean what we doing? We sitting in front of the building. Like, we, <laughs> yo, you sitting in the crosswalk. There's nobody out here. Like, it, the, the building has a crosswalk in front of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but there's nobody out here. You know what I'm saying? We just sitting here in the park. But not, it, not even in traffic. We like... Pop, right? Mm-hmm. I said, this is my daughter. That's your daughter. That ain't your daughter. What you mean that ain't my daughter? Yo, boss, you, you want to give me a ticket for something? If you want to give me a ticket for the crosswalk, give me the ticket for the crosswalk. Now, we want to church. You're not searching nothing. For what? Searching for what? So now my daughter, oh, they're going, they're going yo, how old are you? She's a, she's a minor. That's it. You don't need to know nothing yeah, else. You're a minor. You don't yo, need to speak need to her. know how old is she. What are y'all doing? Did, did you, oh, my God. Did you pick her up? Like someone, I know, so, like like she's a street a walker. Like she's a yo, street who, walker. Yo, my, who, who the fuck you talking to? Now my daughter's like, Daddy, she start crying. Daddy, Daddy, just stop, just stop. Now we ain't stopping. Because now you talking, now you insulting my kid in front of me. <laughs> and in, in front of her face. Are you out your mind? You understand what I'm saying? To you? And she's like, yo, my stepdad. Now she, I understand why she did it. But at the time, I'm, me and her stepfather, that's my brother. But at the same time, she like, yo, my stepdad's a copy upstairs. He upstairs. She call up him because she feel like of course he he can come. And he's the only the one that could and calm these because you know why head. you know why because he's down with the gang because <laughs> he's in the gang and you know and don't saying? get me wrong and 
And, and Z's my dude. Yeah, definitely. You understand? <laughs> but I'm just saying the reason she understands that is because she's growing older to understand Stay the in. world. And she understands yeah. that the only thing that could stop them is someone else that's like, part, part of the of game. Crew. And yo, and listen, he was like, yo. She's like, yo, I'm giving you my ID. I said, I said don't yo, move. Don't, don't touch nothing. Because now she's grabbing. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you my. You can't even touch nothing in this situation. Because as soon as you reach for something, yeah. shot go off. Yeah. She still grabs her. She gets to her ID. Here, look. And they see she's like 16 years old. Oh, all right. Cool. The, who the fuck? Now he throws no this apology. shit back. No apology. No apology. Walks. Yo, I'm ready to get out the car. She's grabbing me by the arm. Because I can't understand. Why would you even pull up? We wasn't doing anything. But you, I was sitting there having a conversation with my child. But, but, you, but you have to understand that someone, someone said to me a long time ago that we don't, we as, we as black men and black people as a whole in this world don't realize the PTSD we experience simply because of our experience in this world, right? Mm. Like you think about the fact that when you're driving and a cop car goes by, and all of a sudden you look in your rear view just to see if they go circle. You nervous, yeah. Right? Right? <laughs> Um, 100%. Something else. You go into a department store, mm -hmm. right? You buy something or you didn't buy something. When you start approaching the yeah, exit, exit door, you, you feel a like bit of tension. tension like, like someone's going to grab you, oh, right? You, oh, you might say like, oh, yeah, we didn't get nothing. Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> that's the it's same. like you justify right, it. And you didn't yeah, do nothing. But that's PTSD. Uh, definitely. That is PTSD from our experience in this earth and the racist and this in the, in the racist culture. You know, to take it back to something that, which is crazy to me, that all of a sudden has been swept under the rug, mm -hmm. after that mass killing in Buffalo, Right, where um, dude went up there and killed all those people, yeah, yeah, yeah. or killed all those black people in the yeah, supermarket. Definitely. So, three days later, I'm in the gym, and I swear to you, I don't feel comfortable in the gym listening to my music because all I'm thinking is, if yo, here, if a mass shooter come in here, I can't be listening to music because I got to hear from the first shot so that I could position myself to defend prepared. myself. Yeah. That's the same way I'm in the gym and, when I'm in the pool and I got my headphones. I'm be like, yo, anything start happening, I can't hear nothing. And then, like, I really stepped outside of myself and I said, yo, why am I even thinking this? You know, <laughs> this isn't a way to live. No, it's not. And to be honest with you, bro, white people, they don't have these thoughts. They don't go through these experiences. But because of our black experience in America, this is the trauma and the PTSD that we have to live with. No, that's crazy. So, <clears throat> I, I, I know we got serious because I like to play around, but, you know, certain things just got to be said. Um, and and I, just stay on the law for a second. Uh, I also thought it was interesting this week. I was uh, looking into the case with, uh, with, uh, with Thugger and Gunner and the whole YSL. Yeah, the Fulton uh, County. Yeah, um... And they came out with more indictments and stuff this week, you know. And I just want to know how you feel about with the rappers, with the lyrics. Um, <sighs> In the rap lyrics and stuff. I know we were talking about it earlier this week. We got a kind of difference of opinion. Yeah, but I mean, we, we, we yeah. definitely do. I think it goes back to the same thing that you said um, with the police, right? Mm -hmm. Until we find the cure, it's all about prevention, mm -hmm. right? And we've seen many other rap artists go down this path. And we've seen what the consequences is. And we've already seen what happens at the end of the road. You know, what confuses me is why is it that although... We've seen this happen before. We've seen this movie a million times. Definitely. But yet we still continue to do the same thing. Talking about crimes or, and I mean, I think we addressed this um, in last week's episode. Talking about crimes and, 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 and pretty much putting your criminal resume out there for the world to see, bro, you're setting yourself up. It's a trap. It's not gonna end well for you. This lady here is basically telling you, look, Jeez. if. I feel like she's going too hard, though, bro. Like, I feel like, I, and, I, and I get it. I'm not and, saying and she isn't. Trying to make their I'm not saying. I'm not saying she isn't. But once again, there is no cure. We cannot cure the problem at the moment. So what we have to do is prevent. Yeah, but, and yes, she's going hard. But why give her something to indict you about? But I, the problem is, is this a slippery slope to me, and this is crazy. And I don't know why we only the ones that always gotta face it again. My thing is, a lot of dudes we go, they capping in the records, right? We mm -hmm. go, they lying in the records. They lying about the cars they got. The money is fake. The jewelry is fake. The chicks they be with is fake. Where they fly to, how they doing it. You know what I'm saying? 
and then you pick a part out of the song. Somebody say, yo, I robbed the store. Now, we already know how the hood go. Everybody trying to get a rep. Niggas is just saying stuff to be saying stuff. And everything not necessary always is true. How do you pick a minute part out of a song and go, that's the case? Like, you, if, you, if everything, if 99 things are not true in a song, how do you figure out which one thing is true? And then, you know, prosecute somebody on that. That's my whole thing. You can't go, oh, they lying about the money they got. They lying about the houses they got. And then go, what they saying is true to prosecute them. Uh, you, you can't have it both ways, bro. Uh, that's uh, only, that's, uh, and I get what you're saying. I, I agree. Understand. You shouldn't be putting your business on Instagram but or so. Listen, nothing like that. But uh, how do you pick it out of a hundred lots? I, I get it. <laughs> like, it doesn't I, make I get any it. Sense. But all I'm saying is if I walk into a bank and I say I have a gun, whether I'm telling the truth or I'm telling a lie, I'm subjected to prosecution. You know that, right? Yes, but this is a form of entertainment. You've literally walked in a bank. It's two things. In any other form of entertainment, it's this, this, what you wouldn't even see this happen. But with everything that's taken place, obviously, it's not seen as that anymore. We've watched countless, we've watched countless rappers be prosecuted because of their rap. Yeah, I'm just so, tired of us have to play to a different, we always got to play to a different rule. You know, it's so funny. My mother used to tell me, when you walk out the house, you got, you got three strikes against you. I forgot what all the strikes was. You a black man, you a... Uh, you, you're you're black, a man, you're black, black, and it was something else. I don't and know. you're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yo. That was a good one. You're right? gonna slap boxes. <laughs> you're gonna slap boxes. I promise you. Yo, yeah. But you know, it's just funny. Like, I had these things that I had rules I had to go by because of who I was, just being black and a man, like walking out the crib. And I'm just tired of us always got to play from a different set of rules but, than everybody. But let me, but let me, else. let me, but let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So when you say that, what is the difference, right, between having to tell your daughter, look, in order for you to be safe, you shouldn't go to a man's house at 2 o'clock in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. There's certain ways that you should move. There's certain things that you may not want to wear in certain situations, mm -hmm. right? It's, at the end of the day, it's the reality. Yes, it's, it's, I agree it's with you. The, it's the reality, and you're not going to tell your daughter, well... You're a female, so you, you, should be, you should be able to go to a man's house at 3 o'clock in the morning, no, no, drunk, listen. and it doesn't matter. No, because I you agree. know the reality listen, and I you know what the consequences listen, the, the will be. The difference is in that <clears throat> if we're doing this thing to the law that's supposed to protect us, Right? The reality is, you're talking about wait, the streets. Wait, 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 people. wait. You can't pick and choose. I'm we just had you. an entire conversation about how the law doesn't the law, protect this, us. I said the same thing in the same conversation. The law is supposed to be protecting Supp us, supposed and, that, to, and that's the problem. Supposed to like, we defending ourselves. We got to feel... I hear, that's, doesn't that's, keep that's, us alive and it doesn't keep us free. I hear you. But guess what? At the same time, it's still a law system that we're supposed to be feeling safe and protected by. Well, and if we can't feel safe and protected okay. by them, what are we doing? But my question to you is this. You're saying... And this is, this is what I don't understand. This is a law system where we're supposed to feel safe and free. In the history of America, we when have we like, ever felt we safe never and felt free? Like but so, at what point, so, at what, so at what point, no, wait. What point so it makes me feel. It makes me feel like when you say we're supposed to be, that just means you, bruh. And 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 I'm not trying to discredit. That's like you drank the Kool Aid. That's the that's the BS they sell, but it is not the reality. The reality is, you know, since told, the inception you, of this country, country we you, have not yeah, been but, safe. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But at what point do we get to? Just because we ain't been safe, I, you can still ask the question, at what point do we, how, when do we get to that point? We get to that point when we come to realize that oppression has never stopped at the willingful hands of the oppressor. It's been forced to happen no, by the oppressor. You always want to be mighty Moses. No, <laughs> it's, and, and listen, say I, again, say I, I like didn't, the line. I just like the no, line I didn't come up with that. That's message. a quote, that's a quote message. from someone in yeah, history. Oppression <laughs> has never come to a stop by the willingful hand of the oppressor. It's always been forced to happen by the oppressed. And until we decide that we're not taking it anymore, and look, there's going to be a lot of sacrifice. There's going to be a lot of loss. But until the day that we decide that we don't want to take it anymore, it's going to keep happening. There's definitely going to be a loss. Somebody take this nigga, please. <laughs> now I had to lighten it up, man. We we get two Malcolm X on these niggas right now. I know we getting real serious, so we gonna lighten this up, lighten man. Lighten up, we 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 gonna cut to a skit. Go check this out. Get some laughs. Yeah, please laugh. America still be America when we get back. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
gun with an EVT card. Well, I don't know my cousin has a hookup, so that's... Ooh, so we right should get there. that done, because you've been trying to fix that body to elementary. Hi. <laughs> Hello, long time. Yes. Hello, how you doing? <laughs> good job, Hi. Oh, no, very nice, no hair. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> shady today, ain't you? But that's why we're here, girl. I need nine bundles of my usual. Yeah. I... Girl, I'm so excited. We want to see no, nine, three. Three? <laughs> I'll just take them. And do what? What do you mean, do what? What do you think I'm going to do I with them? I am your normal client. <laughs> wrap it up for me. Uh, no, like... you can wrap it up for me. I'll take it. Who's going to wrap your eye up after I make it a 1B? <laughs> Wait, first of all, a... no, you can take those for me. First of all, I'm the one without hair. And you've been doing so well for this long, Amber. Relax. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I have a job interview, so I definitely need it. Girl, you've been oh. interviewing this whole You're not even getting that job. Uh, you might have hair. You're oh. bugging. Uh, you might. Me. me. You know what? <laughs> Y'all can keep it. Do you have a scrunchie? I have a new idea for you. What you got a scrunchie for? No, no, no. no, no, no. You can bag that for me. What? No, 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 no. no, no, no. That's we not what we're doing. doing. No. no, we are doing that today. Just, just give me my hair. How? No. Wait a minute. How? What? Are you trying to do the... Yo, we're bugging. I can't believe we're doing this link for hair. Yeah, because she's bugging out. You know what? Don't do that, girl. We better than this. We've been friends with... We're not doing it. Give her back her hair. None of us are going to do it. It's okay. You know what? Very nice, very nice, Let us know we have enough for everybody. Very nice. Come on. Come on, girl. We We bugging, man. Come on. My girlfriend. Come on, we bugging. Come on. What are you talking about? Three bundles. No, last one I have, so no eighty hundred dollar. <laughs> always trying to get somebody money. Okay, it's gotta be a secret though. Oh, I got Keep you. Shut them eyes. I got you three. <laughs> I'm making no bag with a hundred. Ah, okay. la la. Okay. That's why you my girl, Ling Ling. <laughs> Oh, I hope so, friend. $80. $80? Yes. You no, no, no. Need to pay a little on, extra. Man. Yeah. Loyal on, customer. Man. Okay, I'll be a loyal customer. Come on, we got this. Like, you give me more. Kiss. All right, all right, all right. One, two. Oh, I got you. <laughs> oh, three bundle hey. for you. Thank you so much. Like, Money. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> you, Thank you. Look here, Miss Ebro. I need those bundles and I need them now. Oh, I hope for a friend, a hundred dollars. Oh, come on, I don't got that. I, I, I'll give you one twenty. No, 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 your hair no nice. You need it. Yeah, you wild disrespectful. Okay, listen, I'll give you 140. Oh, very good. <laughs> Criminal. Oh, yes. I have hair for Just you. Just give me the hair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I love the black people. <laughs> Brooklyn Boys Radio. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we back. I hope y'all enjoyed that I hope skit. Yeah, enjoyed that skit. Lighten things up a little. You know what I mean? Hey, we get political on y'all. I'm sorry for that. We ain't gonna do that too much though. Yeah, but, but uh, see, even in the skit, you see how they do us, right? Going back for the weave and all of that. Yeah, man. I hope y'all enjoyed that, man. We just wanted to lighten up the moment for a second, man. But I want to tell a quick story though, man. I remember one time. Story time with Stat. Oh man, I remember one time I got robbed, man. Like from a chick, man. She had came to the crib, right? So I was in desperate need looking for a chick in, in, inside close to my house because I was tired of driving to the, to the Harlem, Queens. I'm trying to find a little shorty in Brooklyn, right? You ain't mentioned the Bronx. I wasn't going to the Bronx, bitch. <laughs> Stop, man. So, um, yeah, so I had found a shorty close by, and shorty was bad, bro, right? So at one point, I used to live in Eastern York, and I used to live in a basement apartment. My brother lived upstairs. My little brother lived upstairs for me. So... He had some money for me. He had like five hundred dollars for me, right? So he told he had called me on my cell phone. Was like, "Yo, 
I left the 500 for you on your dresser. All right, cool. You left the 500. I come in with shorty, shorty. Pow, pow, pow. Like right, she banging. So I go in the crib with her. And I'm like, yo, I'm just trying to get to the drawers. All I could care about the drawers. So I turned on my, that, that time he had answer answering machine. I turned on the answer machine. He telling me he left the 500 on the dresser again. So I right, cool. I don't care about that. So me and Shorty, we making out. We doing what we about to do. I take off the shirts. I finally get to the, to the breast. And I'm like, oh, yes. My phone rings, right? My brother, yo, you got, you know how B.O. is. Yo, you got that money, man? Yo, I put that money in the dresser, man. Don't be asking for no more money because I, I gave you back your money. All right, B.O., I ain't checking, but I, I, I'm going to kiss you back. So I kind of turned to the back, and I ain't seen no money on the dresser. But I'm like, I'm going to deal with that. But I finish, you know what I'm saying? The so, power of the P-U-S-S-Y. Yeah, it's crazy. So I, 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 you know, I get back on the shorty. I got the pants open, the pants down. The phone rings again. Yo, what's up? Yo, man, you better take that. You better tell me you got that money, man. Because, yo, listen, I, I ain't going to be responsible for that money. I put that money. Don't tell me you had that money in the dresser. I'm like, yo, all right, I'm going to check for the money. So I get up purposely. Shorty, I'm going to the bathroom real quick. My brother told me he left some money in the dresser. Because I don't see no money, right? Because she walked in the room right before me. Uh-huh. So I don't see the money. So I go to the bathroom purposely. So she already hear me talking about the money. So she could put it back. Put the money back. You understand know what I'm saying? What type of women does this Yo. man deal with? <laughs> yeah. So this come on, I'm like, I'm like 22 years old. So I'm like, yo, um, I go to the bathroom, I come back, I still don't see the money on the dresser. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let me I still I want this nut though. I don't really care. I'm a I get I deal with the money when I finish. So panties come down, shirt off, she naked, my phone ring again. My brother, he, I won't answer, but he wilding on the answer machine. So I got to, he going on, yo, you got that money. Yo, you better tell me you got that money. I don't care what you do with that girl out there. You better tell me you got the money. So I pick up the phone. Yo, all right, hold on. I'm going to check to see if I got the money. So I go on the dresser. Yo, I don't see no money. Yo, that bitch got that money. Bitch. <laughs> you know me, yo. So that bitch got that money. And I'm like, yo, what you talking about? Be easy. So I locked Shorty, I locked the door, B. I said, come downstairs. He come downstairs. Yo, I put that fucking money on your dresser, B. I don't care. That bitch stole that money. Cause that money was on your dresser. You let her in your room without you let her in your room by yourself? And she was by herself? I'm like, yeah, but she ain't come on. She ain't take the money. Yo, she took that money. I left that money right on the edge of the dresser. So I said, alright, cool. So Shorty hearing all this through the door. What tells you he should do at that point? Put the money put back. Put the money back. So check this out. Open the door, I said, yo, shorty, come in. She comes here, she sits on the couch. I said, look, man, I go in the room and I grab my baseball bat, right? And I go, look. I was look, not there look, look, man. when this took place. <laughs> look, I just want no, to make no, listen, that nobody clear. Got I, I took my baseball bat. I said, look, man, I said, I'm going to ask you one question. Did you take my money? But I don't, I don't, she don't see the bat in my hand. The bat is behind me. So I go, yo, did you take money off the dresser? No, nah, I don't take no money. Why would I take some money off somebody's dresser? I ain't no broke bitch. I ain't taking no money. I said, look, man. I pull out the bat and put it in front of me. I said, look, man. I'm going to ask you for the last time, B. Yo, this bag will go upside your head. Did you take my money off my dresser? Did you steal something? No, I ain't taking no I said, look, go in the room. We're going to close that door. And if you don't come out here with my money, it's going to be a problem. So she closed the door. All hands, things moving. She moving everything. Let me guess. She found it behind look, look, the dresser. Look, look. I found it! I found it! <laughs> Where the fuck did you find the money? Because the, 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 the dresser sits on the wall like this. No money can't fall behind the dresser. And she go, I found it! I found it! She talking about she found it behind the dresser. My brother said he put it on this side of the dresser. You know the dresser long. It's on the other side of the dresser. I said, yo, if you don't get your ass up, I'm... but I still wanted the crotch, but yeah, I got rid of her though, but you know. That was my story, Mo. I just got robbed in the hood. So be careful who you And more to the story, be careful who you bring in your house, B. And put your money in your jewelry array because chicks will get you. That's the moral of the story. It's a cruel world. Speaking of that, we're going to go to this skit, see how my man got got. Oh, man. We'll be right back. <laughs> Good morning, good brother. Do you know that Jehovah died on the cross for your sins? Let us pray with you. I brought you some literature. No, well, miss, not today. Why not? Just come on, Zebo. You listen, know listen. they say that like, when God comes back, he's coming like a thief in the night now. I gotta go. Come and pray. You know the Lord's eyes are upon 
telling you, he's watching. Not today. God is watching. Never. His eyes is on the sparrow. Bye bye. He is watching. It's not even Sunday. It's Friday. Y'all think people do something? Y'all think it's a game? Y'all my window? Hey yo, did I say? Tell you the Lord's cometh like a thief in the night. Bob Mines, man. I got got. Uh, listen, I got, listen. Got, uh, I'm, I got rock to sleep by I'm, I'm, I'm cool with being real, but there's certain stories I will never tell. That wasn't a good story to tell? It was, it was cool, but it was kind of graphic and it kind of, you know, we just had a whole conversation about leaving yourself open to prosecution. How does the prosecution, I didn't do nothing wrong. I just wanted to get my money back. I was, so, oh, did, so did OJ. Oh, so did OJ. <laughs> Bro, you can't put the story out, man. <laughs> Whew, hindsight is 20 20. 20. Yeah, I was stupid. I don't know. But um, but anyway, go ahead. speaking about that, <laughs> let's talk about Jay Z. Jay Z tells no lies. Yeah, that verse is immaculate. Man. That latest verse on um, on that God did is 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 is, 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 is one of the best verses he to me that he had. Um, I just I, well coming of age, I guess like. I feel like it was that verse. I'm not saying this is last verse ever, ever forever, but it kind of summed up his whole life. <laughs> it did, but but you know, because you know I mean? one, I think that the the great thing about Jay is like you you get to see his life come full circle. You know, one of my favorite verses from Jay was his verse on um the did it all joint with with um with Jeezy, mm -hmm. right? And it's simply because like it took you the same thing he did right now, like on that God did. I feel he did on did it, did it all, all yeah. but he gave you the beginning to that point in his life that he was at pretty much now, yeah, yeah, you know, and, yeah, how, yeah. and how he got there. And um, I think the great thing about Jay, once again, is I think that Jay is the manifestation. He is the epitome of what every little boy in the hood, when they're standing on the corner and that luxury car drives by and he goes, car. that's my yeah, car. Right. He is the epitome of because that he, success story that, success that we story all is, hope to one day at, become. At its highest though, at its highest level. Like we have, we have never seen that. Somebody that looked like us and come from where we come from. And us getting a chance to work with him and, you know, um yeah. be around him. He's still he's still not far removed from Nah, he still he still he still feels like one of us. One of us and when not, he's talking. And yeah. not to mention to to be surrounded by many of his peers that he grew up with, grew up that with. he knew for 30, 40 years. You understand? Yeah. I think that speaks volumes. Um, Emery having did a bid for whatever reason and coming home. Mm, you know, yeah. I mean, these are the things that we dream about. You understand? Because I remember when my cousin went away to do his sentence and he got 12 to life. And I remember like, damn, when he come home, I want to make sure he's straight. But, and, he, but look at Tata, taking somebody like a Tata from the projects who was like maybe the protagonist of the projects at that time and mm -hmm. taking them up with you and turning them into like one of the dopest A and R's that's out there had a niche for mu a, a niche for music himself and then look at that you got Ty Ty you know you take OG you know they said you know he was dealing things at a massive quantity and now changed his whole life spectrum like that's but 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 you know and doing the all legal paper and that's what the song but, was about like, but I but I also think that um aside from giving that credit to Jay you have to give the credit to those around him because I think you know, they, 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 they stood as that support system, right? And they didn't fall for the trappings and the pitfalls that a lot of young black men that are in these crews that are trying to attain success 
that they succumb to, which is the envy, right? Which is that everybody wants to be the general. Um, I think they understood, yo, Jay is the thing that we need to protect, right? Everybody's not going to be rich at the exact same, same time, time, but as long as we keep, that's what kills a lot of crews. A lot of crews. Everybody because everybody looking at what this person got in their pocket, mm -hmm. and yo, what mine's at, you know, and a lot of people's stomachs is touching, and yeah. then, you but, know, because it's something. But everybody got to make sacrifices but, and crews. You but, know what I'm but, saying? But it's it's something that I used to say all the time. You know, I always used to say, look, I want us all to get rich. But we have to understand that it isn't going to happen for everybody at the exact same time. Some are going to go first. Some are going to go last. Some may not go at all. But as long as the relationship is there, that now, bridge would, is still there, yeah, yeah, the, we, the opportunity, we can do anything together. the possibility yeah. is still there for that to it's, happen. It's endless. And I think that what happens a lot of times is people prioritize the money over the relationships. Listen, money never got nobody rich. Relationships it did. did. Point blank, period. Man, 100%. But like, I just want to get into the verses. Like, the verse is just crazy from the beginning to end. He's like, yo, you know, he was a billionaire. He's the first billionaire. He made basically three more billions at, billionaires mm -hmm. after that. Rihanna, Ye, Ye and, and LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Which mm -hmm. is, it got some fat credibility in oh, there. Oh, definitely. You know what I'm saying? The lines in there is just too, it's just too many lines, man. I was just going through the lines. I don't know if Tico going to give us a couple of lines real quick, but it's too many lines in there. What's the balls, Tico? I, yeah, I thought that was crazy too. Like just on some other, uh, uh, just on some other shit because he ain't got no record for it, and then left the dope game and then turned the dope game basically into champagne, right? And both of them shits was illegal at one point, but <laughs> and then he took the legal one now and made that you know, like profitable and it made success out of it. Like you know, what I mean, it's all facts. But you know, but you know what that what that line did for me it. It brought back a memory, right? I remember me and you was in LA, right? Mm -hmm. And it was one of them trips that we had took um, when we were developing Money, Money and Violence, Violence for yeah. Stars. And we had went to the gym. Mm -hmm. And you had left the gym about 10 minutes earlier. You was waiting for me in the car, right? So when I came out and I got, the, got in the car and you looked at me and you was like, yo, Mo, you know what dawned on me? And I'm like, what? And you was like, yo, we beat the odds. Yeah, and I was and I was like, what are you talking about? And you're like, bruh, we're in our 40s. We have our freedom. We're chasing this dream and it's happening. If we think about the majority of the people where we're from at that at our age yeah, yeah. who are either dead, locked up. Like we beat the odds. We definitely beat the odds. You know, and, and and for him, like like he said, you know. No education, not saying no education, but I, you know, I'm high school, I'm a high school diploma boy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, no but, father in the crib, no, none of that. You know what I'm saying? My mom's raised me and my brother. So to see that, like you said in the beginning, he's the epitome. No, nah, definitely. So big up to Jay-Z, man. It's just too much bars to go to, to go through, man. Y'all got to go through the song. And every time I listen to the record, I hear something else that I didn't hear before. Well, shout out to Jay, man. You did your thing on that, bro. <clears throat> so listen. From Jay-Z, who's a, a hood legend all over the world, to a Brooklyn hood legend, I want to give my brother 80 happy birthday shout out. Happy, happy birthday, birthday Ado. Ado. You know what I mean? Like, big up to my brother 80. If you're from Brooklyn or from any parts of America, you should probably know 80, man. So by the time he see this, his birthday probably over, but we still shouting him out. You know, quick 80 story real quick. I mean, he taught me a valuable lesson. One time I was traveling the country with Ado, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, just traveling. And I ain't had no money one time, like, to get around. And it was like a war show. He was like, Styles, you got to be there. I'm like, all right, cool. I can't get there, though, man. The flight's too crazy. It was like the day before the show. He's like, yo, take this $1,000 and this $400 and go get a truck and rent it and, and drive down to, I think it was like Atlanta. I'm like, drive down to Atlanta, $400. He's like, yeah, just get the truck for $400, i am going to give you 1000 Long story short. I get the truck, I drive down there. He's like, carry this box for me. I'm like, this box? What's in the box? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it was just sneakers in the box, right? And a pair, a pair of jeans. So I drive down to Atlanta, me and my man, we drive down to Atlanta. We get, I get to 80. And to me, I'm not like a handout type of dude. So I was appreciative that he rented the car and got me down there and made mm -hmm. sure I was cool. And he was like, yo, I said I had like maybe about four or $500 left over from the thousand that he gave me. 
I said, yo, here, ain't all here go the money. He said, nah, Styles, keep that. I said, yo, you already took care of me. I can feed myself and you know, I don't need nothing else. Styles, just hold on to that money. So we, we going out, we partying, right? We going out, we partying. And um, in Atlanta, I don't know how much parking is. Parking is ridiculous to get to the party. We pull up with that truck. They talk about 200 for the truck, right? I'm like, 200? They say, New York is $50, right? So he, he was like, yo, when we got to the thing, the guy was like, yo, y'all paid for it. So he paid for the truck. Okay, cool. Why do you keep paying for everything? You know what I'm saying? So, valuable lesson right here. Get out the car. It's um, Mano's, a bunch of us. Everybody kind of walk. He said, yo, Styles, come in. Told me and my man to come in. He said, yo, come in for a second. He said, yo, here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And went to my man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I said, yo, what you giving me this money for? He said, yo, listen, we going in the club. We going to enjoy ourselves tonight. And we all men and we a crew. We all gonna look like we on the same level. No man gonna come ask me for money. I'm not gonna pass you no money. You gotta be, we gonna be, we gonna be a crew. We gonna be a crew on the same accord when we walk in here. I said, all right, but you know, I don't drink and all that. So throw the money at the bitches then. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, if you don't throw it, keep it. I said, yeah, but I got the 400. Then I got the four, 500. He's like, it don't matter. Take that money and go back home. But when we together, that's how we roll together. And that taught me a lesson for a long time. Like, Make sure your crew and your people around you. Nobody look like they beggars and stragglers around you. You know what I'm saying? So I always love 80 for that. He, we, you know, we always look out, each, look out for each other with the kids and all that. But it's on a personal note, outside of the music business, that's my brother. So I just wanted to celebrate him and tell that story. You know what I mean? So and he done amazing things. It's, he liked the hood. Man, I used to see 80 give out anywhere from 1000 to $2,000 a day. Just people coming up to him. For Brad B, and this is when he was walking. Even when he wasn't w walking in the wheelchair, he still was doing that. So he always took care of people. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to you, um, Ado. Love you, my G. Happy birthday, Ado. Now talking and showing about love is something I can always appreciate, but this time around, I want to talk about shit that I hate. Now this piece in no way, shape, form, or fashion is meant to offend. It's all in the name of fun. So let us begin. I hate ugly people who act like they cute. I hate seeing big ass people in tight ass suits. I hate cats with bad breath breathing in my face. And I hate when I'm riding a train and somebody with that wide ass try to fit in that little space. I hate houses so dirty that it makes you itch. Call me now for your free reading. Yo, I used to really hate that bitch. This piece, once again, is not meant to offend you, you, or you. So please, can I continue? I hate cats with big dog cars still living at home with their moms. I hate people who go to church on Palm Sunday just to get their palms. I hate parents who got bills in their children's name. Damn, lights, gas, phone, have you no shame? I hate females who talk all that shit about how they work the dick. Do you get them in the bedroom and the ass ain't worth shit? I hate dudes who stay screaming they from the street. Name them damn well, eight o'clock at night, you can find me in the house watching shit like America's Next Top Model or Oxygen movie of the week? <laughs> you bitch ass nigga. I hate Jehovah's Witness chasing me down just to give me a fucking watchtower. I hate people think good sex means we gotta suck and fuck for three hours, bitch, I got shit to do. I hate people who call me in my house and ask me if I'm home. And I damn sure hate people who get phone calls on other motherfucking cell phones. Well, it's time to bring this hate session to an end. Once again, it wasn't meant to offend. I'm just simply stating how I feel. But if you did get offended, then that means you can't take a joke, so fuck you coming from the real Brooklyn. Yo, I hope y'all enjoyed another episode of Brooklyn Boys Radio. Thank you for tuning in to episode two. You know what I mean? We on the episode three. Next week we'll be back like clockwork. Oh man, yeah, episode three. We're gonna add something new to the, uh, to the set. Listen, man. <laughs> We learning as we go along, right? When we got this thing started, we said we're going to jump off the roof and figure how we land on the way down. Thank you for watching us fall. I'm getting back up. I don't know about you. Brooklyn, out. Brooklyn boys. <laughs>